before I started making jewelry, the only thing I did more in my life than anything else was ride horses. Because from the day they let me out of the hospital, the very next day my mom had me on a horse. And for 20 plus years I rode horses probably almost every single day of my life. I really love what I do. I mean, I, I can be out here and I can work. And I try to explain it to people. I tell them it's, it's more of a madness than it is a happiness because, um, you know, I, I literally wake up sometimes at two or three o'clock in the morning and come out here and start working because I had this epiphany, you know, and it's like, I got to get it done now. I got to figure it out. And it, it's, uh, fortunately I work good on little sleep. I, I was always an artist. My mom, the only advice she gave me when I was a senior in high school is she said, you're probably gonna live a lot longer than you think. You should, you should pursue something that, you're, that you, you're passionate about, that you care about. So I studied museum management, because I always loved museums. And in order to graduate, it required that I took a certain number of electives. So in the course catalog, there was these classes that were listed. The title for the class was, it just said metal smithing. I figured that's gotta be an easy A because that's all I was looking for is just, you know, something to get that requirement out of the way. I never realized what the possibilities were with metal. I never thought that, you know, you start with a flat sheet of whatever and you can form it into this vessel or you can cause it to move or change. You can take two different metals and join them together and get this whole other uh, thing out of it. And um, it sort of latched onto me. So I, uh, I knew some jewelers and everything. Actually, I knew some, a cowboy who was a jeweler. <laughs> and he told me, he said, well, come, come to the house and I'll put you to work. And so uh, Gibson Nez gave me a job and and because I had a background already in it, I, all I did was saw for him for forever. And uh, he, he introduced me to the art business from the artist perspective. Gibson showed me that it was a viable way to make a living if you, if you knew how to do it, if you worked it right. And so uh, I realized that the, the training that I had was just the tip of the iceberg. So I went back to school at UNM and I studied under uh, Constance de Jong was the metalsmithing professor there. But the thing that she was known for was patinas coloring metal, which really spoke to my painterly side. So I got my BFA at UNM and then, and then uh, it's pretty much been the deal. I mean, I, all that time I worked on jewelry and worked for other artists and worked for jobbers and, and was in the jewelry business. But um, that, that was how I got started. It's all an accident. Thought I could get an easy A. I see jewelry as sculpture with a context. So if it's not wearable, if it's not comfortable, if it doesn't accentuate the human form, then it doesn't succeed as jewelry. Then it is just sculpture. You know, when somebody wears a piece of my jewelry, I want it to be comfortable. I want it, I want it to, to fit their body because if it feels good, then you feel good wearing it. Then the fact that it's beautiful only accentuates that even more. It's, uh, it's like a good saddle. You know, you can have the most beautiful saddle in the world, but if the hand ground seat is not done right for you, you don't want to ride that thing. And that's the same approach that I take with my jewelry. You know, I want you to not know that it's there, so to speak, so that you don't want to take it off. My, my approach is to satisfy all those creative desires that I have as an artist 
within this little tiny piece. I tell you what, it's hard. It's a pain. And sometimes you have more heartaches than you do happiness, but it's all worth it. <laughs>